All right, so welcome to Algorithms Live. <clears throat> and this week, uh, we'll be covering some USACO problems uh, that were in the mo a more recent um, December contest. Uh, there, there's been one extra contest in January that happened. Uh, and there's some cool problems in that. Um, but I'm going to focus on two problems that I think are pretty interesting. I'm going to try to implement one of them uh, and see if I can get these optimizations to work to actually get it to pass uh, for the tougher problem. Um, but without any further delay, let's let's dive right in and talk about um, some of these problems and how to solve them in an interesting manner. So the, <clears throat> this first problem is called lasers and mirrors. Uh, and it's a fairly interesting problem. We have a starting location um, a robot shot and some posts out through the grid so we can draw them in various places and then at some point we have an ending location a barn that we want to hit and so we could call this the starting cell <clears throat> maybe that's the barn and what we'd like to do is we'd like to shoot a laser in one of the four cardinal directions from our starting location and eventually hit the barn. Now, if we shoot this from the starting location into any of these directions, it's actually not going to hit anything. Uh, it won't hit the barn, which is over here. Um, so we have these fence posts, and our laser will shoot directly over the fence post. But we can put a mirror on top of the fence post is one caveat here. So maybe I put a 90 degree mirror here. So if I take the laser and it hits the fence post, it actually gets deflected at a 90 degree angle. So I can put uh, a fence, uh, a deflecting mirror like so. I could also run my deflecting mirror the opposite direction and have the laser hit the reflecting mirror and bounce to the right. So in this problem, we can put several different deflecting mirrors on some of the fence posts and then hit the goal. So the deflecting mirror can go up, left, down, to the right, up again, and then into the barn. And so what we'd like to know is we'd like to know what's the minimum number of um, mirrors so this way or this way that we have to place uh, to hit to reach the goal <laughs> and the laser can be shot in any direction and it can also come into the barn at any direction those are um, two pieces for the problem that don't um, don't actually restrict the problem anymore but what we'd like to do is <clears throat> uh, basically come up with a way of solving this problem efficiently and figuring out the number of mirrors to place. So we can't do something like try all possible placements of mirrors and just sim it. We don't have enough time for that. Uh, I should go over some of the bounds here. Um, so the number of fence posts that I'm given can be up to 10 to the fifth. And the coordinates are bounded in this range, so up to 10 to the ninth. And so we, we have a lot to play with here. So the, the basic idea is what we want to do is we want to build a graph. We want to turn this into a graph problem. And once we turn it into a graph problem, we can run um, 0 or 1 BFS uh, to figure out what's the minimum cost to get to this barn. So the, the way 0, 1 BFS works, what we want is we want to build a graph. And we want every single one of these weights to be either cost 0 or cost 1. That's what's going to allow us to do a 0 or 1 BFS. All right, so how do we convert a graph like this into uh, like a set of mirrors and uh, 
lines into a graph that actually solves the problem. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the points. So maybe I come down here. And for every single point, I'm going to basically use this technique called splitting the vertex. So we're, for every single point like this, we're going to have two nodes. We're going to have a vertical node and a horizontal node, V and H. And it's basically going to say the vertical node is going to say I'm hooked up to pieces vertically. And the horizontal node is going to say I'm hooked up to pieces horizontally. And I put an edge between the vertical node and horizontal node because in order to switch directions between going vertically and going horizontally, then I need to pay a cost of one. Because the only time in this problem that I actually have to pay any cost is placing a mirror. And placing a mirror is equivalent to just switching directions on the xy plane. So conceptually, if I, I look at this problem here, let's, let's take a look at my, my graph. What I'm really building is a graph that looks something like this. Where there's an edge if you're on the same xy plane. So maybe if I put an xy plane like this or uh, another post like this, like between points on the x line, y plane, if they're adjacent in y direction from each other, if you go straight down or straight up, um, there's going to be an edge between them. But instead of one node in this form, I'm going to have it two, be two different nodes. And I'm going to hook up all my horizontal connections, the horizontal node that's representing it. I'm going to hook up all my vertical connections to the vertical node. And then I'm going to hook my horizontal node and vertical node up to each other with a cost of one. So uh, if I had something like this, I would turn them all into two nodes. Uh, so let me make this a little smaller. So that those are my two nodes. And so top will be vertical connections, bottom will be horizontal connections. Um, so these two are connected horizontally, so I connect the horizontal nodes. Uh, these two are connected vertically, so I connect the vertical nodes. And same thing here. These two are connected vertically, and these two are connected horizontally. And we also need vertical connections here. <laughs> so that's roughly what the graph looks like. Um, going on a vertical route is cost zero because it doesn't uh, cost anything to change directions or to keep the current direction. So in terms of the problem, you're shooting over the fence post and not hitting a mirror. And then only these things in the middle are cost one connections. So even, even your vertical or horizontal node could be the starting node in, in the problem. And what you can do is you can just enqueue both the horizontal and vertical node into your BFS to not make the starting position matter. And if you have a destination node, so maybe something over here, um, then hitting either of these nodes is considered hitting the, the ending position. Um, so we need to take a little bit of care building this graph because we don't have enough time to do it inefficiently. Um, we want this, this graph to be not so big. Uh, so we're like, if we hooked up vertical connectors like this, this graph could get pretty big, uh, pretty fast. So we're going to make the graph very sparse. Um, so here's the idea to, to make it, um, increase how, or decrease how, uh, dense this graph is. Um, we're going to run a sweep vertically on all the points that we have. 
and a sweep horizontally as well to find adjacent y coordinates and adjacent x coordinates. So do some points here. So if I'm running a sweep from left to right, what I'm going to do is for certain y coordinates, when I come across a point, I say, this is the last time I've seen that y coordinate uh, for this y value. And then I come across a new one, I say, this is the last time I've seen this y coordinate for this y value. I just store them in a hash map or a tree map um, or whatever the equivalent is in your language of your choice. So you're sweeping from left to right. In other words, you're sorting by x coordinate. Uh, you process every single point and you look in the hash map for this y coordinate. What's the last point we've seen? So when I end up hitting a point like this, I query the y coordinate and I'll pull this out of the map. And I'll say, okay, hook these two nodes up according to my rules for the graph. And so you'll map that back to the split node version. And I do the same thing over here. I, I say, okay, th this y coordinate's already been seen. I get to this node and I find something already in the map. So I hook it up like so. And when I come across a new node, this is now the node in this y coordinate of the map. So <clears throat> nothing gets connected here. I get to this node and it looks at the y coordinate and it sees this old node and it hooks it up. And same thing here. So I'm building a sparse graph you'll realize that it's fairly sparse because for every single point, it can be hooked up to at most four things. So that's a linear size graph. And I do this exact same calculation, but in the vertical direction as well. And I can build this graph with zero or one edges fairly quickly. So now all that's left is running a what's called a zero or one BFS. So it looks just like a normal BFS. So um, for a BFS, you keep a Q of what's most recently visited. So um, whenever you find something that hasn't been explored, you put it on the back of the Q and add it to that back of the Q. And then when you go loop through the queue for BFS, you look at the front of the queue, try to pop it off and try exploring all its neighbors. And anytime there's a new neighbor, well, that goes on the back of the queue. So <clears throat> for a zero or one BFS, what we're going to do is uh, look at a double-ended queue or a DEC. Um, sometimes it's pronounced DQ, but either way. Um, and the idea is slightly differently. So I still pop that first element off the queue in terms of my BFS, but some of the edges we're exploring are cost zero and some of the edges exploring are cost one. So if I look at my queue, it's going to have some things that are cost D away at the front of the queue and some things that are D plus one away at the back of the queue. So when I come across something that's new, that's a cost zero away, what I do instead is I put it on the front of the queue because it maintains this property. It's still cost D away. And when I come across something that is cost one, I put it on the back of the queue because it maintains this property that it's cost D plus one away as, a, as referring to how far out in my BFS I currently am. So I build this graph which is going to be the number of edges I've bounded by four times V. Uh, and so then I can just run a BFS on this problem after doing my sweep to pre-compute the graph. And what I'm left with is the um, order N algorithm. Well, N log N for, because we have to sort to run our sweeps, but N log N algorithm uh, for solving this problem. So it's not the full graph, it's just the, the graph that um, is only containing adjacent pairs of things. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to implement this problem um, building the graph up front. But if you look at the US USACO, their example solutions, um, they end up 
uh, implementing it in a way that ends up um, not using, uh, uh, basically building the graph on the fly. Uh, so they maintain some information about the points and what's adjacent, and they take a look up and they look in each direction and they say, is there a point here? Is there a point here? Is there a point here? Um, by looking at some maps that they're maintaining. But I found it's a little bit simpler to think about if you just build this graph up front and then run it. That It was simpler for me, um, but to each his own there. Okay. So that's how you solve lasers and mirrors. So hopefully that's clear enough. So we have this second problem, and I spent some time uh, trying to implement it today. And I was getting TLE despite uh, my best efforts in understanding what I thought the runtime was. So uh, I'm going to try to implement it again here. And I'm going to discuss where I was having some issues. But for the most part, I understand what's going on in this problem. Uh, so, And then I'll see if I can figure out the optimization to make it fast enough. So what we have here is we have uh, this problem about Farmer John and his cows. And so you're given, the cows actually want to build um, a robotic cow. And each robotic cow takes in some types of parts. So we have, here we have three types of parts that the robotic cow can be built from. And um, here are the costs of different brands of these parts. So you could buy slightly cheaper parts, slightly more expensive parts. Um, and we'll say that a cow is fundamentally different if it has just some part that's different than uh, in one cow and not the other. So um, I need all three of these parts, for example. So this is the sample case. I need all three of these parts to be in my robotic cow. So maybe I take this one and this one and this one, and I can build a robotic cow of some kind. Uh, and the cost of building that robotic cow will be five. Or I could take this one, this one, and this one, and it will also be five. Even though they have the same cost, they're different cows because um, they're ultimately different parts. And so what I would like to do is build k distinct cows. And we'd like to be as cheap as possible. So we have n parts part types, <laughs> and k distinct cows that we'd like to build. And we'd like to know what's the k cheapest distinct cows, uh, the sum of the k cheapest distinct cows. Um, and each of these part lists is at most length 10. So um, you could say m1, m2, m3 is given to us as the length of the lists. And we're guaranteed that mi is always going to be less than or equal to 10. Uh, the number of part types is going to be at most 10 to the fifth. And the number of distinct cows is also that we have to build is at most 10 to the fifth. Pretty tricky problem. So let's let's talk about how we might think through, through such a problem. Um, one idea is doing something priority queue style, um, we, we know that the cheapest cow is going to be formed by taking the all the cheapest parts, so part uh, the smallest part in every list. Uh, to make it a little easier to think about, I could sort the list of parts for every single part and uh, start thinking through how I want the k cheapest parts. <coughs> And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to find um, the, the k cheapest cows. But it, it becomes a little bit tricky because I don't know how to move through this. So for example, here I could move up the cost by 1. Well, let's say this next one was cost 30. It might be better off to pair 3 with 2 with 3 later on if I want 
the, the next cheapest cow and then moving on to that 30 cow. So if you're thinking in terms of BFS, your state could be this vector um, or basically some kind of like priority search. Your state could be this vector that's telling you um, which cow part you're currently using for each of these. So it's like X, Y, Z, and it continues on. Um, so right now it's three dimensions, but it could be um, even more. Um, and every time you're at one of these points representing your state, you just take what's currently there and try moving to the next um, the next possible cow weight or our next possible part weight. But that's kind of problematic because if I try moving each of these, the number of edges in my search is going to be way too big. Uh, there, there's n possible things that I could tweak in terms of incrementing where they where I am in each of these lists, right? Because this list can be very long. So that kind of shuts down that solution idea. So it becomes really tricky to figure out. Uh, also, if you're trying to do this BFS method, you might try incrementing these two like so, there are two ways to actually get to that state. What I could do is increment this one first and this one second, or I could do it in the opposite direction. I could increment this guy first and then this guy second, and I could get to the same state. So it's actually hard to track over counting. So this all gets complicated really quickly. So we need to find a better way to uh, attack this problem. And so here's here's the idea. Finding the sum uh, or finding the k cheapest cows in order that we could possibly build is pretty hard. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something that I can verify fairly easily. Given some cost of cow, I'm just going to enumerate all cows less than or equal to that cost. That's much easier to do. So I'm going to do this in sort of a backtracking style. So if I look at this problem, maybe I want to uh, enumerate all cows that are cost less than 5. Well, I can do this in order. I could fix the first cost, run through, get to the next level, fix the second cost, fix the third cost. Well, I found one cow that is of cost four. All right, so now I try incrementing this cow to this, to this area, right? So I'm, I'm basically doing a DFS here down my lists, and I'm making a decision on which, for the ith part, which part do I use? So I got one, two, three, well, this is cost five. All right, still less than cost five. Increment this. Now I've gone over. So I need to uh, break out here. That that's not that's unsatisfactory. This this place right here. <clears throat> so I backtrack a little more. I try cost three now. I look down at this position and I say, okay, well, I've got cost five. Right. I backtrack a little more now. Now I'm over the cost, so I backtrack a little more. I try the next biggest cost. I try the smallest cost so far, that, that's, that's two. And I get out to this cost and I can't do it. Um, yeah, and so then I'm done. I can't find any way to have any more cows. Um, so if I have a quick way of enumerating all possible cows that are less than or equal to some cost, then I can know very quickly if I have the most expensive cow that I'm using. So that's the base I, baseline idea. I like to know um, what's the most expensive cow that I could form at any um, given time. And when I try enumerating all cows, 
if I start enumerating cows and I ever get more than k cows, then I know that there are not that many cows less than or equal to that cost. And so I can just break out early. So that's the, the subproblem I'd like to solve. I'd like to solve this problem of um, given some costs, determine if uh, So determine if k cows are less than that cost. OK. And so once I hit the k cow, then I'll know that if there are at least that many cows, then I could kick out early. That's what I want to find. Now what's interesting is this cost value is binary searchable. If I end up having, if I end up increasing this cost function, I'll end up having more cows that I can have. Um, if I end up making the budget too small, I'll have less and less cows. And so at some point, I'm just going to try to find what's the most expensive cow that I have to take in my set of K cows. All right. So imagine we did have the K cows. Like we, we just knew what the cost of the K cows were. It would look something like this. So maybe um, maybe these are the most expensive cows. So maybe I'm searching for seven cows. So k equals seven. <clears throat> One thing to realize is some more cows might be more expensive. So this is just a bar graph of the, the cow costs. Well, they might there might be a whole lot of cows of this cost, and that's fine. What I really care about is the cows that are less than cost of this. Because if I know what the most expensive cow is, and I know how many cows are cost strictly less than that, I can just sum up the cows that have a cost less than my target, or strictly less than my target, right? Basically sum up the savings of these K cows, and then take the most expensive cow, right? So running, uh, running through my most expensive cow, and I'll know that the remaining cows that are the most expensive cow, I just take the number of cows that are left that I didn't enumerate, and I quickly, I just print those out. Uh, not print those out, but um, add, them, add them to my resulting cost. So I'll, I'll need to be able to do two things very quickly. One, I'll need to be able to know for my cost what are, yes or no, is this the most expensive cow I'm going to take if I'm trying to find the K cheapest cows? And the second thing is I need to look at the cows that exist right here that are strictly less than some cost and find all those cows and subtract out the savings that I get by not making them the most expensive cow. Right? So uh, I actually do need to do two, two DFSs here, which is kind of interesting. I, I thought I could do it with one, um, but it turns out there, there's a problem with that because I might find some of these more expensive cows first uh, before finding the cheaper cow brethren. Um, but there might be one way to still combine it into one DFS. So um, that's something I'll try to think through. Um, yeah, 
But that, that's the basic idea in robotic cow herd is I can binary search for what that most expensive cow is. And then it's much easier to verify if I have enough cows to form my K cows of that cost or less. And then it becomes a lot easier to enumerate if I know what my budget is. Um, because if I don't know what my budget is, then uh, the cows could be much more expensive. So I'm going to go look through uh, questions and see what's going on. All right. Right. So th this is mostly what we're trying to do with robotic cow herd. We're trying to find um, sets are, are basically co combination of parts that the sum of all those things is as cheap as possible. All right. So I'm going to try coding this one. Uh, and see see how far I go and see if I can actually get it working because um, this will be a little bit more easier to talk over the solution. Uh, there, there's a piece in my solution that is pretty slow right now uh, or my approach that's pretty slow right now. So I'm going to talk through that and see, see if I can fix it. Um, but if not, oh well. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's talk through this robotic cow herd problem. Pull up, pull up the problem. Okay, so I have some number of parts that I'm going to read in, and some but some target number for my cow. And for every single type of part, uh, they're described as microcontrollers. So I'll I'll make an array of controllers. So it's an array of arrays. So this ray is going to be length n, and then it's going to have uh, some space for every single part. So I will read in my input. Hopefully I can do piping in uh, Windows. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be an experiment. Um, so just read in my input at the moment. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort each of these because they don't guarantee that the controller costs are size K. And I'll start talking some optimizations to make... Actually, once I get the baseline working, I'll start talk, talking optimizations. Okay, so that that's my controller. So now what I need is a function... Um, and form where I basically ask myself um, cost if I get out to this certain point can I form a cow of uh, this cost uh, of some max cost so I'm going to put in a budget that I can't go over and if my cost ever exceeds the budget, then I'll I'll get out of here. Um, so the basic idea for this thing is I want to make a function that's going to return true if I basically fill up all the cows. Um, so I need to make sure that I'm always being productive with my DFS, that I'm always 
um, searching down a path that ends up having um, some cows that I have left to form. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the cost of the cows. So the cheapest controller is always cost zero for every single part type. That ensures if I'm ever at a position I in my um, depth first search, that I'll at least be able to form one cow um, down that path. I, I think I'm starting to see why this might be a bit slow too. Hmm. Let's see if I can look into optimizations. Hmm. <coughs> okay, so I want to know some information from this point on in my current budget. If I can basically, how many cows I can form? Huh. It'll look into this function f. Hmm. Oh well, let's let's just implement it slow anyway. So if I get to the very end, um, what I'm basically going to do is. the cows that I've currently found of less than or equal to that budget. And if I end up finding more cows than I need to, then I just return true. So then I tried going down um, different paths uh, down this tree and see if I can end up finding more cost. And so if I ever end up maxing out the cows that I've seen, uh, I end up having some kind of a problem. Or uh, I, I can basically bail out early. So I'm going to try to find the K cheapest cows um, of some cost and uh, basically see if I can form them or not. Um, I do want to do one optimization here. I want to take the controllers that I currently have and basically make the cheapest one of cost zero. Uh, and the reason I want to do that, that'll ensure that I always have a way of forming a cow if I ever get to an if statement, like um, get past this if statement, down this branch of the DFS, I can always find a cow to build. So here, here's how I'm going to do that. So I've got my controllers.
Um, so there's there's going to be a baseline cost for all 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 cows now. Um, I'll change that name here. And that's going to be the cheapest controller. And then what I want to do is I want to normalize all other controllers relative to that cost. So I actually have to do this in reverse order to get this to work right. So now I'm bringing down the cost all the way to zero. And so the way this works, I can find the cheapest cost so far um, in terms of my budget. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a binary search uh, for the cost I can form. So I'm going to have a low value from my binary search and a high value. Uh, I'm going to form the high value as I go. Um, that's going to be the most expensive controller. So basically, I know if I have way too many controllers to form, it's bounded by me picking all the most expensive parts. That's the most expensive cow I can build. And if that's not enough to form the K cows, then I have a problem. I don't think you, yeah, you can always build at least K cows. So we're, we're looking good there. So now I can write a quick little binary search um, to basically find what's the K most expensive cows. So that my binary search value is going to be my budget. And so if I can form K, the K most expensive cows with my budget, at least K cows having this much budget, like if I can form uh, at least K cows having this much budget, then I know um, this is an upper bound on the most expensive cow. Otherwise, I know I need more expensive cows. Uh, so the way this DFS works, I still have to um, fix cows found. And then that can work. <coughs> All right. So this should find, uh, it should store in high. I'll just print out high. What the most expensive cow is found so far. So I'm going to write out my code and see see how that works. Uh, of course, I have some compile issues. Oh, yeah. And I'm searching from zero, zero. So I'm basically asking myself the question, can I form K cows um, given this amount? And then find high. So the sample for this problem, let's see if I can. Yeah. The sample for this problem, the most expensive cow I can form is cost three once I normalize it. Um, so in terms of the problem, if I add my baseline, I'll get how expensive the cow is in actuality. Um, 
the case most expensive cow is uh, I guess I have it cost seven. Yeah, no, I, I believe that's right. Um, so here K is 10. So if you were to trace out the K most ex or K cheapest cows that you can form, uh, the K one is going to be cost seven, um, the K cheapest. So <clears throat> that's the first part of the problem is I need to find that most expensive cow. And then I need to basically enumerate the savings. So for whatever my budget is, so I've, I've got to keep my budget around, um, I need to calculate the savings um, from finding, finding cows that are strictly less than my budget. I, I need a value saved here called savings. And that's what I'm going to uh, subtract out from my total cost. If I find something strictly cheaper than the most expensive cow, uh, I get some extra savings by taking that cow. So I'm going to find all the cows that are strictly cheaper than the case most expensive cow. That's going to calculate my savings. Uh, and then I return. Uh, so I don't need a true false here. It's just a regular old search. And then I can loop through all cost values for the controllers. And already see, uh, even with this pruning, we're, we're going to have a serious problem. Oh, it shouldn't be calc savings, uh, or it should be calc savings, good. And so this is the bare bones of my DFS. It's basically going to try to find those K cheapest costs. Uh, but what might happen is I might get into weird cases where I need to explore uh, multiple children and that could get really expensive uh, as far as um, like how many children are down this path versus how how much um, savings do I actually have or, or how, mu how much cost do I actually have. So we're going to have to put in some extra pruning. Uh, and But for, for now, let, let's talk about this more baseline version of this solution <coughs> and uh, get this to work. So we know the most expensive cow. That's going to be equal to our binary search value plus its baseline. And so then we know the um, if everything was the most expensive cow, uh, I'll call this over cost. It's the most expensive times the um, number of cows taken, which is k. So if I look back at my diagram here, I'm basically assuming that all my cows are the most expensive cows in calculating this rectangle. So I have this rectangle completely filled in. So then I do an extra search that calculates all these different savings values. Uh, and subtract that from this bigger rectangle of costs. And that will tell me exactly what's the um, cost of the K cheapest cows, because I'm going to find all the cows that are cheaper than my most expensive cow and see if I can get that to work. All right. So that's going to be my savings. 
and I can just print out my savings or print out my result. Uh, so I need to call calc savings. And I need to give it a budget. So my budget is going to just be um, high. So I need I need to find everything that's strictly less than high in cost. <coughs> All right. And so, and, and basically figure out like how much I um, save relative to uh, the most expensive item. Okay, let's see if I can get that to work. Oh, I need a semicolon. Oops. Talk about a typo. Results equals over cost minus the savings. Okay. And I get 61 as my answer. So my code appears to be working. Um, But you'll see in a minute it's actually not working. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll make some modifications to my code. So if you if you haven't done USA SEO before, um, you actually have to read and out write to file. So um, put in some file file code real quick. So I have file input stream. So it's called roboherd.in. I have to write to a file called roboherd.out. And that should work. Oops. So you have to build roboherd.in. And so this is my 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 uh, input file here, so I can see that and see if it's getting the right kind of output. So it appears to be working. So I'm going to submit to USATO. And you can see I ended up, last time I tried this, I got a bunch of time limits. Uh, so we'll see if I can get that to work. This time. And so while the grader is running, uh, I can kind of talk about what, what's causing issues for our code and see if we can figure out some optimizations. Um, so it passes the first three cases pretty, pretty quickly, but then it starts getting time limits. So you can think, I'm only enumerating the answer, but it's still going very slow. Like you might say, well, how am I bounding the runtime to my algorithm? And I think I know what's going on as far as what's causing it to be fairly slow. So I'm going to try to think of uh, some optimizations and see if I can squeak by the, the time limit here. Um, but if not, we'll end up failing and call it a night. But uh, I'll, I'll see if I can explain exactly what's going on and why this is running so slow. Um, so what could happen is I'll, I'll try taking something down a path. And I could get out to a certain cost. And then at that certain cost, I have to go really deep and take all the zeros. So I basically have to do order n work right here, going down one of my branches to even find one more cow. And then it, it could happen again. I could get a little bit further out. And then I could have to go down order n uh, down down one of these branches and get one more cow. Um, so this could happen a lot if I'm trying to find my my k cheapest cows. 
Um, and so with what's left in a subtree, I, if I'm trying to figure out whether or not I need to uh, take something, I could end up in a weird situation like this where I have uh, multiple things to think about in terms of my branching. Uh, so I could have a really long piece, or I could have a really long piece, and then the last two um, end up adding two cows every single time. So that that's really what's slowing me down, is one of these really long chunks where I'm basically taking um, a large number of cows uh, where it's not it's not really doing anything to change my answer. <coughs> so what I I need to do is I need to find some way to speed this up. Essentially, if I get out to a certain position, I need to very quickly be able to tell how many cows I'm going to get out of there. Um, so I've got to think of some kind of optimization here because right now I think roughly my my running time is something like n times 10 uh, times n, which is pretty slow, times uh, log of p, something like that. And if you look at the solution guide, they say what you can do is you can speed up one of these uh, sub searches by replacing this order n piece with something that's uh, uh, log in here, so I can basically search search down um, a subtree and basically figure out exactly how many cows um, are being added if I if I get down one of these long paths. But I am not sure exactly how to do that. <laughs> so I'll see if I can get an idea real quick. Let's see. Upper bound. I wonder what he's computing for F. Oh.
take a look at this budget thing. So that's why that's being sorted. Okay, so I think what I can do is I can do something a little bit smart with this sorting. I'm going to sort these controllers here using uh, Java to basically get the lexicographically first delta in my search uh, sort. Um, see, see how much that speeds things up. If I get two arrays, <laughs> uh, my next optimization is I'm basically going to um, put things in order as far as like the smallest change is um, possible go first. And something that's like a much bigger change in terms of um, what I'm calculating. So it results in a, a bigger change of value. Um, goes second. So hmm. I'm going to compute deltas, so. One minus A of I. So what I'm basically doing is I'm looking at adjacent values in the array, and I'm sorting them by um, that comparison. Otherwise, the shorter one is going to come first. So I'm going to so. <clears throat> So now I've basically sorted all my controllers um, basically by their delta. And so that should speed things up. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure um, how much is going to speed things up. But I think this, what this allows me to do is quickly determine um, if I can add one to my um, to my savings or not, uh, or, or to, to what I've basically found or not. Uh, but I, I, I'm kind of curious. I want to see like how much optimization this actually saves me. Uh, make sure it's still it's not OK. But we'll send that up as well. I, I don't think so. I'm failing 4 or 5. Let's see if I it cheeses past any of the tests. Uh, so I've got 4 through 7, 9 through 10, 12 through 15. Those are ones I'm failing. Uh, so we'll send this away and see if that saves me anything on the data. But I think what this allows me to do, just thinking through the code, is it um, basically will I, I can get an increasing function on um, what I have left to do and prune out a little more. So yeah, I think I'm getting getting burned here. But I can take a quick look. Sure. 
So we really need to solve that problem, though. That's uh, a tricky thing for us right now is figuring out a way to basically not go down one of those long paths when I only have one as part of my solution. Um, let's see. Make one small change and see if I can solve this. I'm going to add one extra printing case and see if I can, can get by. Um, so if So here, here's my here's my Hail Mary, and then I'm going to give up if I can't get this to work. But here, here's the idea. I'm going to look at this value, and if it puts me over my budget, but I'm currently under budget, well, all my cows have been normalized for cow zero. So I found a cow down one of these long paths. And so this is one extra pruning piece. So what I'm basically doing is I can always get the cow down one of these paths. That's all zeros, right? So if I end up ever hitting a long path like this, I end up getting all zeros. And so I can just count that cow right away if this delta right now pushes me over budget. But if it doesn't, and I've basically sorted them by the second cheapest budget. Um, and so I can go down uh, expensive branches and this will be perfectly fine um, because the second cheapest part is always going to be incre an increasing function here. Um, but if I can't get that to work, like if I go down a branch and then I end up getting stuck, then I'm in trouble uh, and I'm, I'm not going to recover there. So I'm, I'm going to do the same optimization <clears throat> down this other path. And if, uh, if this also puts me over budget, I'm going to add it to my savings and just return, um, or if it puts me over or equal to the budget from where I currently am, then there's only one cow I could possibly be making down this branch. So I'll just do budget minus cost, and then add it right there, and then return. So this is one extra factor of pruning. It might not be enough, um, but this is all I have right now as far as uh, getting this optimization to work. So we'll, we'll give this a try. And if I can't get it working, that'll, that'll be enough for this episode. Let's see. I was found. Oh, cows founds, not cows found. Hmm. Oh, right, right, right. That's it's index out of bounds because I, I I have to put it after the space case. Same thing over here. See if it's still working. Yeah, it's still working. 
So we're going to give this a try and see if it's enough to get by the data. Um, but there might be one more optimization. But it it's really comes down to those long paths and figuring out how to optimize this so you, when you go down one of those long paths, you don't end up exploring too much. Oh, it passed test four. That one optimization might be enough. All right. Last test. Oh, we got through. OK, so that, that I guess that's enough of an optimization is just make sure when you're going down one of your branches that you're also considering um, this last case of basically it. there's only one way to form that cow. And so if I prune off that uh, that last piece, it's enough to actually solve the problem. So that's how you solve uh, robotic cow herd. And uh, yeah, I had to figure out how, how to do these last few pieces on the fly here. Um, so that's, oh, that was not what I intended to do. Let's see how close I was getting to the time limit here. I think maybe it's a two second time limit. I don't know. I uh, that now it seems to be a little bit worse. Like case seven was pretty bad for me. Not sure what the actual time limit here is on USACO. All right. But it seems like it was a fun week for uh, competitive programming. Uh, and catch you guys all next week. Um, I'm hoping to have another guest on soon. Uh, I've got a few things lined up and planned. I think a lot of you are really going to enjoy. Um, so see you guys next, next week on Algorithms Live. And uh, have a good week and solve lots of problems. Maybe try this one out for yourself. Uh, it's a lot of fun to solve. Or some of the most recent USACO problems are really cool. So I've um, been having a lot of fun with these. So see you all next week.